First up, we have South Alabama at Appalachian State. The Mountaineers are seven-point home favorites here, and the over-under is posted at time of recording at 63.5 points. Kicks off 7.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Now, the Mountaineers have won the last four meetings, but this is not an annual cross-division meeting, so they're few and far between, a little bit sparse. South Alabama actually took some movement, a little bit of movement, uh, midweek, they are down from their plus seven and a half. It opened, those got bought up, and now you're offered plus seven. You can still find the plus seven and a half as of a Wednesday time recording here, but just know that they are trending in that direction. It's not an insignificant move either. About 14% of all college football games end on seven. That is the second most important number, key figure, as we call them here uh, with football betting. Now, forecasts, I know we're a day out, but forecasts are calling for rain, potential thunderstorms, kind of a toss-up here. There's no real wind impacts there. My main focus here would be like lightning and the game getting delayed, which we've seen a few times on these midweek games. Now, guys, we all saw what South Alabama did last week to Northwestern State. They dropped 87 points. That's the most in the FBS since 1991. That's a pretty long time here. Now, they played shortened quarters and then ended up in a whole betting mess. I get it. If you're holding a ticket and it got scratched, a winning ticket, I should say, and it got scratched due to the game not going long enough, I get your frustration there. Now, it sounds silly, but I take almost no stake in that game. Northwestern State is one of the worst teams in the FCS, and especially in college, when things get out of hand, they can get really out of hand, and those kind of problems, especially at that level, tend to snowball. Now, the Jaguars, they do run the ball fairly well. They have two running backs, Bothwell, Bullock, who are both tough runners, lots of yards after contact, pretty decent tandem back there. The problem is South Alabama's defense is atrocious, especially against the pass. They're near the bottom of the FCS in drop back EPA allowed. And on the other side, they're playing Joey Aguilar, who's one of the better quarterbacks, in my opinion, in the whole country. He threw for over 400 yards on a pretty good Eastern Carolina secondary just last week. Now, I'm wondering what this line would look like, and I like doing this exercise, if South Alabama did not publicly post 87 points last week. Like, if it was like a 59-7 win, or, or you still a big blowout, but not record-setting, and like all the eyes on social media were on South Alabama last week. Um, you know, it, it got a lot of attention. I just, I think this line would probably be higher if we didn't see that kind of historic annihilation, again, of a very, very bad football team. So for me, this is App State minus seven at home. I'm only taking on seven. If you can only find seven and a half, I'm not suggesting to take App State there. But if you can get the seven, even if it moves a little bit six and a half, which kind of doubt, uh, I'm definitely taking App State with the points there. Aguilar should be able to move the ball through the air. I think App State's a step up in class from both North Texas and Ohio and, of course, Northwestern State that South Alabama has already taken on.